1 p.m. case, Richard A. Swernow, Parkway Swernow Incorporated, trading as Tabrizi's Restaurant and Soso Cafe, 1221 Key Highway, Class BD7, Beer 1, a liquor license, remand of case from the Circuit Court for the Board to make findings of the facts that are supported by the record of the previous hearing. Everybody testify, please step forward and raise your right hand. Correct. No testimony will be taken today. All right, is there anything? The board's here. You know why the board's here. You've already um, given us the oral opinion, in addition to our written order from Judge uh, Cannon, dated the 9th of November 2012, with our instructions on remand. We also have been provided by you a copy of the judge's decision phase of that same date. Uh, and it's more detail with 11 pages. So is there anything beyond that that you want to tell us about? Well, the question is whether you want to hear argument as to that or you don't. I think um, I don't want to belabor, you know. Right. The judge made it very clear that, I mean, well, this is a limited With the here. jackhammer and, a, and the fan. Yeah, OK. So the judge says that, you know, to reopen it would be unfair. Uh, not reopen it for any other evidence or for any other submissions for any parties. So there's not going to be any evidence, no memos, no anything submitted to the board. Doesn't say anything about argument, but I, I mean, I think her instructions are clear to us at this point. So, any statement there? Well, the only statement, on, and for the record, Melvin J. Kadensky and Kevin Pascal for the uh, uh, applicants in the case, um, the only thing is that it seemed that the judge had the, the problem with regard to as based in her the decision as to indicating as to how uh, the addition of this particular um, barge would be anything more than what's already there. And that's where she came out with the uh, the jackhammer and the hand and the fan type argument saying that if there's a jackhammer going out there and I had a fan, it'll be an addition, but it's not going to be greater. And there's nothing to indicate that why um, there would be uh, any deteriorate impact on the on the, uh, the community uh, regarding that. We, we would object to that characterization. All right, and well, I'll, I'll note it, it and, and I'll, I'll overrule it. Is All there right. anything else? And I think Mr. Pascal just has something very briefly and then we'll... Then we'll good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, how are you? Um, I handled or assisted Mr. Kadinsky in the appeal and argued the matter before the court. Um, the point I would like to make is that um, the, the court sent it back for an explanation based on the record that was before the board. And the court made it a point of the Attorney General's opinion indicating that any um, ruling should be consistent and as much detail as possible. I would suggest to the board that this was not uh, a matter of not combing the record to find sufficient evidence to support a ruling denying the license, but that the evidence just did not exist. We did, yeah. All right, and, and um, it, it's argument, so I'll overrule it. Uh, gentlemen, uh, one of you uh, may make a statement, if you like, um, regarding our remand decision, uh, only as to the um, propriety of what we're going to consider, um, but n nothing even approaching uh, trying this matter de novo or bringing in any new information or even just a recitation of the facts. No. Are we clear? Da da yes. David thank Walsh, you, thank Wallace. you for your time. Uh, on behalf of the citizens here and others, we object to the characterization that they both have made. We were there in court and heard the comments. Mm -hmm. We don't ag at all agree with the characterization of the jackhammer and the air fan. In fact, we cite it really as a jackhammer, and uh, we remain steadfast in our opposition. All Thank right. you. And just see all they're saying. That, that's what they call dicta from the judge right. uh, as far as that analogy. And so, you know, there's. It, it is what it is. Um, what we're interested in is obviously the path and the path and the methodology by which right. she needs us to find a decision. Okay. All right. Anything else? Yeah. No. All right. Um, let me go ahead and, and get started. And in fact, quote Judge Cannon in her decision of November fifth, two thousand twelve. In fact, let yeah. Let, let me start. Let us start by quoting the last two paragraphs of our decision of March 8th, 2012, um, the board went through the factors. Um, and quite frankly, the board heard testimony on this matter on February 2nd, 2012. Due to some delays, the board did not actually get the decision until March 8th, 2012. And in all honesty, uh, obviously several hearings, had, like a couple dozen hearings had taken place in between these two hearings. And, Board hears several hundred cases a year on the record. 
Um, and what happened here from a review of the transcript is that somehow uh, when I gave the decision, it seemed to just kind of abruptly cut off. That is, that I seemed to cut off um, the discussion uh, for the reason for our decision. And, uh, and I'll, and I'll um, go ahead and read it here. It says, what we have determined is that uh, there is an impact, a deleterious impact on the welfare of the community, and that there's simply one way in and one way out off a pier onto a street that offers no public parking. Patrons of this establishment would be forced to walk to come and go from the establishment right next to residential units. Thereafter, we deny the request. And I think the judge was correct in that um, that's not a specific explanation. It's almost as if that's a preamble to some more detail. And in fact, in her oral opinion, she says she's trying to figure out what it was that made us make the decision we did. And she says, in her oral opinion, on November 5th, 2012, in some ways, in fairness to the board, it's complicated because there was so much preoccupation with the history of the licensee with respect to other restaurants. Of course, other restaurants meaning the Tiki Barge. Then she further goes on to say that, but I can't tell that that's the basis for what the board's deciding here. If it is, it's not disclosed. And it really is, and it really is important that it be disclosed. So I'm going to send it back to the board. I'm sending it back to the board. I'm going to ask the board to clarify its decision, but I'm not going to. I'm going to be really explicit that the board can't reopen it. Um, so then she later goes on to say what their reasons are and what their focus are. And the focus she's given us today is clearly to stick with discussing what, why we found a deleterious impact on the welfare of the community based on the traffic coming to and from the licensee. Um, licensed establishment as proposed to and from and or on and off the pier so let us first and and we are apologetic that we didn't bring it up before but it was clear to the judge uh, that there was something more here than what was in the transcript and she's asked us to say did we base some of this on any prior history of the licensee with respect to other restaurants that is respect to other expansions and the answer is yes we did and it would be disingenuous for anyone to myopically forget the many many hours that the original expansion caused us all to spend at room 215 of city hall and so it is clear the agency is taking quasi-judicial notice both of the protest of renewal of liquor license LBD 7368, a document received back on February 28, 2011, heard by the Liquor Board as agencies won. In that document, which was received into evidence at, an, at a protest of renewal hearing for this very license that we're dealing with, 1221 Key Highway. On April, the board had a hearing on that on March 3rd, 2011, and issued a decision in that, pro, in that uh, protest of renewal revocation hearing on or about April 28th of 2011. Now, Mr. Kaninsky was obviously present at that hearing. Um, Judge Cannon was not, and so it was our foul in our error to not bring these things up and make sure that they that, that we disclosed some of the reasons that we made the decision that we did in that petition for protest of renewal and in the testimony by Mr. Kleiber and Dr. Marie Washington on March 3rd, 2011. We heard consistently about public nudity and urination being commonplace on the pier and right at the exit or right at the landing of the pier to the community. In fact, it made the Baltimore Sun and became a source of some amusement to some. We heard consistently about intoxicating barge patrons stumbling through the Harborview community, making obnoxious gestures, yelling profanities, and generally disrupting the peace. We heard this both in letters and, but, but specifically, remember the testimony of Dr. Washington and Mr. C and Mr. Claver. Um, the board was here for hours on it. And indeed, 
We did on that date, and we do want the decision phase of April 28, 2011 to also be considered, and, and we're disclosing that it's a ba one of the basis for our decision, um, is that we heard about vomit and all the other things that were being done at the landing to this pier, and specifically um, a lack of security, and then we'll address that because the board suspended the entire license premises for 30 days as a result of uh, what we considered that disturbance of the peace. Um, after that, the licensee filed a motion for reconsideration, paid a fine, and agreed to a security plan, which is, which is, which is a fact. Um, all that having been said, um, the fact that a security plan was agreed to didn't automatically paved the way for further expansion of the pier or of this license. It, it simply addressed a problem with the, with the current expansion, the Tiki Barge. Um, so then we did consider the mayhem and the, the trouble that was caused, all that we've described in the past before the Tiki Barge had a security plan. Then along comes the applicant and gets a security plan for the Tiki Barge, and then comes along and files for yet another expansion of this license with no plans to double or any further security plan, simply to tell us that it's gonna be the same security as we have for the Tiki Barge. So the issues we have here uh, in this remand um, is that, first of all, we had testimony. Um, in this hearing, albeit sparse testimony um, in the February 2nd hearing, uh, in, in fact, the, the hearing was chewed up by a lot of um, formalities and, and really not a lot of evidence one way or the other was presented at that time, but there were a couple things that the board, according to the transcript, the board introduced or the board received. One of them was the letter from Michael D. Sisk Sr. who um, testified on that day, and we have, um, we have the transcript here. But he uh, sent a letter in and also testified. And in the, in the letter, he raised um, four points that were raised in a previous letter from Harborview Homes, I believe it was, dated January 25th, 2012, which the board I mean, I know we sat here and we talked about that letter at some point. I don't see it in the transcript, but all I see is two exhibits other than the applicant's exhibits. So I, uh, one was, says Mr. Sisk and one says Mr. Kleiber. So I don't believe that that letter was brought into evidence, but it, it, I know that we did discuss that letter in the hearing. Nevertheless, because it doesn't appear to have formally made evidence, um, we'll rely on the points that Mr. Sisk raised in his letter, which in fact did make evidence. Um, and in there, he asks that he, he had four questions or, or problems with the bar that were with the, with the proposed expansion that were raised at a community meeting. And one of them was, um, they were all about the marina and, and, and will they have toilet facilities, will they have adequate plumbing? Uh, and those don't affect the patrons coming and going from the pier, where you go to the bathroom and, and where, uh, where's the plumbing gonna be? But the other two questions that the community asked and he asked, the community association that, that, that he's referencing in this letter was, what are the hours of operation? And is there adequate parking and how barge guests will access the raw barge? And those are all indirectly related to our concerns about the pier being a single exit and single entrance um, facility that now would be doubling its, or, or certainly doubling its amenities and its square footage as far as a second expand, expanded barge. Um, we further, Mr. Sisk in his letter that was certainly in evidence, objected because, uh, he, because he believed the intent of the owners was to have commercial deliveries all seven days a week. Something we went over in that hearing at some point, but the point is those are, those are concerns as to people coming and going from the barge, uh, not from the barges, not just patrons who may or may not have consumed alcohol and have been a customer of these establishments, and that's what we're here for, with the liquor port, but also for all the other foot traffic that is associated with a business of this type. So 
Later in that same hearing on February 2nd, 2012, Mr. David Wallace testified and also seconded Mr. Sisk's concern that potentially a second barge with later hours and patrons are going to be funneling right through this marina building and headed to what had been planned in 1986 as another high-rise tower, now headed to a group of row homes. And that's what he testified to. And that is a unique concern about this area, is that they are not going at, and, and again, going back through the record of this hearing and of the violation hearing on the same address of March 3rd, 2011. And, and I mean the protest or revocation hearing, of course, of March 3rd, 2011. It all goes back to the fact that the patrons of, this, of the current expansion and certainly of the proposed expansion do not walk through a typical city street egress uh, to come and go from the establishment, that they go right into a group of row homes of, of right across the street from the pier, and it causes, um, it, it causes undue disturbance to the community. Um, Mr. Wallace continues and goes on that we, you know, that again, there was supposed to be a plan for towers and not for row homes, um, and that he also testifies later in the, uh, that, or, or actually I'm cross-examining Mr. Mr. Craven in the February 2nd, 2012 hearing. Um, Mr. Wallace um, asked Mr. Craven, you know, there's no way we can get a water taxi between the lot, parking lot and the end of the pier, can we? And, you know, and that was deferred. Mr. Craven was you know, demure about that. But again, all of these things are, are tied to people coming and going from the pier and the impact that it has that we determined was a disturbance on the neighborhood over a year, uh, over, you know, a year prior to this decision or to this hearing. And there is no other way. So we're, con we're convinced here that there is no other way to get people in and off, on and off that pier without, without bumping into 501 through 511 um, Harborview Drive. Um, Mr. Wallace further testified that, you know, that, that the ones who do live across the street from the pier are the recipients of the traffic, the noise, and the drunken patrons in the February 2nd, 2012 hearing. And Judge Cannon, you know, by making us take a look, and we appreciate you see how to take a look at this decision. Quite frankly, we found a lot of other things in this hearing that um, that we are going to refrain from discussing because we have promised the judge that we are going to only discuss the p welfare of the community and the disturbance that the pier would uh, would bring, or that, that a second expanded premises would bring to the community. So there is something else that needs to be said on the record, um, should Judge Cannon further judge review our decision again and that is we understand because you don't understand the convoluted history of the case because we're only here on an expansion request and now a remand but this um, is an expansion of an expansion of an expansion um, the location already had uh, took breezies and sorzos uh, and the tiki barge under one license so three places under one license prior to this um, and this license was born in an unholy way. It was approved based on a misunderstanding or a, a representation about a community association approving the, uh, approving the request, even though it was later learned that the community association was in fact controlled by the developer for the property. So it, it I think that's important to understand for somebody who is not there on remand or some, on a remand hearing that this license, that this expansion is unique, that this expansion is already teetering on causing undue disturbances to the community based on the, the extensive testimony that the board received back in uh, 2000, March of 2011, and that it is uh, that we believe that, that any further activity on that pier, commercial activity with a, with a liquor licensed uh, establishment is going to uh, cause a great disturbance to the community. 
And again, and finally, you know, again, going back to the, to the pier with only one way to get in and one way to get out, um, the residential neighbors, I mean, according to their testimony, both in this hearing and the 2011 hearing, only contemplated that there would be peer traffic coming from this pier, people coming to and from their boats, rather than patrons coming from a liquor licensed establishment, and certainly not two or more liquor licensed establishments. So we do determine um, that the, we did determine that the, the, the pedestrian traffic at the barge as of March of 11, 2011, it caused a great disturbance to the community, and it's what we determined in the, um, in, in the prior hearing. And with no further, um, with, with no further able, ability to um, review the record beyond our interest and our concern about the pedestrian traffic of the people coming and going from the pier, the board has nothing further to say except we continue. We, in fact, do, uh, will deny this expansion request for the many reasons cited today. Thank you very much. Thank you. The judges will open my part of your argument. Indeed it will. And uh, I've referred to page 6, lines 3 through uh, 17, when I read from the judge's remarks. And that's marked as agency. And in fact, before we leave or go off the record, thank you for reminding me. I want to be clear what we've relied on. Um, we've relied on the transcript of February 2nd, 2012, in our remarks, we relied on the letter, which was from Mr. Sisk, which was agencies one in the February 2nd, 2012 hearing. March 3rd, 2011. Right, well, the February 2, 2012 <coughs> hearing was the um, that was the instant hearing, the, the original hearing for which this case is remanded. Um, we also uh, considered and have marked for evidence the protest of renewal of the liquor license, which was uh, agencies won for remand. And finally, we um, have marked and are reviewing and considering the decision phase of that hearing, April 28, 2011, extract of decision. And I believe that is all that we have considered. And we thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Board. Thank We're you. off the record. Thank you.